Minimalism seems to be such a buzzword lately and for good reason. There are so many benefits to minimalism which I've talked about in a few videos that I'll have linked above. But today I wanted to talk about what minimalism is not and some misconceptions of minimalism. But first, if you're new here, my name is Tori and I love creating videos about minimalism, decluttering, and just living an intentional lifestyle. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up as it really just helps to grow my channel and get my videos out to more people. But let's get started on some misconceptions of minimalism. The first misconception of minimalism is that you're restricted to owning a certain number of items. A lot of people think of a minimalist as someone who owns 30 things that all fit in a backpack and that's all the things that they own. And while that person obviously is a minimalist, I don't believe that that's a prerequisite to being a minimalist. I think minimalism is less about the things that you own or don't own and more about living with intention and just being really intentional about every single item that is in your home. I realize that this might be controversial to the minimalist community, but I believe that if every single item in your home is there out of intention, either because it's something that you use regularly or it's because it's something that you really, really love and adds a lot of value to your life then that is a form of minimalism. The next common misconception of minimalism that I hear all the time is that you have to have all white walls, very little furniture, and hardly any decor anywhere in your home. And this is one that I very strongly disagree with. While I do love white walls, most of the walls in my home are white. I do not think that that is a necessity in order to be able to call yourself a minimalist and pursue that lifestyle. In fact, I actually love a really eclectic and boho home, which I feel like is basically the opposite of a stereotypical minimalist home. But I'm still able to achieve that style in my home while reducing clutter and making sure that every single item is intentional. So if you want to pursue minimalism, you don't have to go around painting all of the walls in your home white. You don't have to get rid of your couch and sit on the floor. You don't have to have nothing hanging on the walls. All you have to do is be super intentional about the things that you bring into your home and make sure that each and every one of them adds value to your life in some way. The next misconception of minimalism is that you have to get rid of things that you love in order to be a minimalist. And I actually think that this is the exact opposite of what being a minimalist is. You should never feel like you have to get rid of things you love, and in fact, minimalism should allow you to enjoy the things that you love even more. Book collections seem to be a really common thing that people talk about when they're decluttering, and instead of getting rid of your book collection, minimalism and decluttering would actually allow you to enjoy your book collection more by reducing other clutter in your home and possibly even freeing up a really nice place to display your books and enjoy them even more every single day. The next misconception about minimalism is that you cannot be a minimalist if your spouse or your roommate or if you live with your parents if they aren't also minimalists. And while this one might be true to an extent, obviously if your husband is not supportive of minimalism, I think that you have to find a compromise and you can't just get rid of things against his will. But I think that you can still pursue minimalism with your own items, with your own clothing, your own toiletries, and you might even be able to make a compromise and have certain parts of your home that are more minimalist than others. And maybe eventually your husband or your roommates will be inspired by the example that you're setting and they'll eventually jump on board with minimalism. And another misconception about minimalism is that it's all about physical items and while physical items are a huge part of minimalism and that's often where people start is by decluttering their physical space that's not the only thing that you can declutter and minimize in your life. Minimalism is actually an entire lifestyle and it can be applied to your friendships, your marriage, your relationship, your phone, how you spend your time, your, your work-life balance, and so many other aspects of your life. Minimalism goes so far past just decluttering your home and I think actually some of the biggest benefits of minimalism come from non-physical things. So those are the misconceptions that I hear the most often about minimalism and just some of my own thoughts on them. I would love to hear some of your thoughts on these. I have a feeling that not everybody is going to agree with me on some things and that is totally fine. We can all view these things differently so I would love to chat with you guys about this in the comments below. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to catch up on the rest of my minimalism series that I will have linked above and in the description box below as mentioned before. And if you like these videos and want to see more of them, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't already done so, I would love if you could subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in a few days in my next video.